It's the next morning. I've come to check on the baby bunnies. And it looks like they've been peed on a whole bunch. And they don't look like they've been fed at all. So skinny and wet. Today might be the day where we have to start bottle feeding. So we have decided to bottle feed the kits, or at least try it. And we saved the leftover milk from last night. But because it's no longer, like, nice and warm, fresh from the goat, and because we were milking this morning and have a whole bunch of fresh milk, we're going to pour some of this new, awesome, super fresh, high-nutrition goat's milk to replace the not-so-fresh, awesome goat's milk. Okay, now we have one tablespoon of raw, fresh, warm goat's milk ready for the baby rabbits. All right, let's grab the babies. No! No way, they look full. Check the other ones. That one doesn't look super full. They're cold. Oh, they are cold? Okay, yeah, let's bring them in. And they're clean them off. That's cold. good. They're all squeaking strangely, too. Yeah, they're, they're nasty and they're cold, but one's kind of full. Okay, we have a dry rag, a wet rag, a rag to work on. And first, here, let's take the fluff off the baby, and we're going to clean him off. And then start feeding him. I know, I know, baby. I'm thinking maybe we should warm him up a little bit more first. I don't know. Because he's like squeaking and acting cold. Maybe let's bring him upstairs. Let's bring the whole nest upstairs because it's a little warmer up there. And then maybe let him get warm while we clean off the other two and stop squeaking. Yeah, let's let him warm up. Okay. I gave him a drop, but he isn't quite liking anything we're doing to him. And if we squeak and breathe it in, then that's bad. We'll clean you off while we wait. Does this feel weird? It feels so weird, doesn't it? Let's do this last one. Okay, that's better, that's better. Maybe let's put them in an incubator to warm up. Would you lift the cloth into there and lay it down? Okay, here we go babies, don't you worry. Get you warm, make sure to check on you so you don't get too warm. We'll check on you in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna try bottle feeding now. They're acting less squeaky. <gasps> He's drinking it. Make sure you don't get it in the nose and make sure you don't go too fast. But other than that, you should be good. I like your pot too. <laughs> now, out of the way so I can keep feeding it. Well, it's good, it's good. He's like, I need a nipple to push up on. But there's no nipple. We switched to a different nipple. We're going to see if that works better. It's the longer and skinnier. This one we've given a small break. But I was doing him for a while. And look at that belly. It's not completely empty anymore. It's awesome how fast they fill up. We'll give him another session after he takes a little break. This other one is still pretty leftover full from last time. Not completely, but enough that we're gonna take care of the other two smaller ones first. You don't know what you want it yet, but you want it so bad. It's almost like lipstick was smeared and mm -hmm. all over there. Come on. Suck. Got it in his mouth, but it didn't suck it. Try shoving, like, kind of through the corner and under the teeth, and then straighten it out. This little guy got a really good latch on the bottle I was doing with him. And look at that belly now. Look how big and full it is. Before, he was all real skinny. Like this one. Like that one is still. And this guy I was trying to do a little bit, so they're taking a break, but we're going to try again. What's really annoying, though, is that they'll get on it and they'll suck it, and you'll hear the cute sucking sounds, and you'll see the milk going into them, and then all of a sudden, they'll want to take a breathing break, and so they'll start breathing instead of sucking, but you can't tell, and so milk starts coming out of their nose, and you're like, oh no, you're breathing in milk, so you take the bottle away, but it's like they don't move their head away from the nipple to take a breath or anything, so we're having to stop and then give them a little break, and then you start again, but we've been managing, look at this, how fat this one is, and this one's pretty fat too. This third one's having some difficulty, but hopefully we'll get him eventually. So we're having trouble telling this spotted one and this spotted one apart. 
So I took a sharpie and drew a little green dot on this one's paw. Do you see that little dot? So now the dot, there's a dotted one and an undotted one. Oh, is he, is he nursing? He has it in his mouth and he's sucking and sucking. That's so good. Oh, that was yummy. Breathing break. There's a little bit of poop coming out of his bottom. That's a good oh. sign. Okay, so these two are sucking. good. This little boy is acting tired and isn't getting a whole bunch so we're gonna take a break and come back in a few hours and try again with him he's like medium full not like super full but not like super empty either so that's better than nothing and then let's put them in a box because we're not doing overheating like happened a few times ago so we'll probably just keep them at room temperature in a little box i hesitate to put them back out in the nest box out with her mom because they she peed on them and that's like bad and then i guess we could try holding her still and forcing them to nurse on her i don't know that's always like a really difficult process and with an injured wrist that would be harder for me and it seems like the nursing is working i don't know if they'll survive and like get enough nutrients they need from the goat milk or if they keep getting stuff in their lungs they might die from that but i don't know maybe we'll try the mom maybe not sometimes she like kicks and like wiggles and they fall off and get hurt or she scratches them or something in the process so there's pros and cons to everything that we'll try for now we've decided to go with the pros and cons of bottle feeding but we might change next time we're feeding and try the mom look at that medium-sized belly yeah look at the difference the biggest one second biggest and medium size that's so good though that we were able to get so much milk in them look at this chunkers it's so fat all right, let's put them in. This is the green foot one. Yeah, yeah it does look kind of full. They're crawly little buggers, aren't they? That big. That look big at that belly. big belly. Oh my gosh. Go smother your friends. Okay. I'll cover you up. Keep you inside. Won't be too hot. Won't be too cold. You don't need fur because it's not going to get down to super cold temperatures. You'll be just fine with plain hay indoors. Okay, it's around dinner time and we're going to continue filling up Runty kit. The other two are doing fine, but this one still needs a little bit more. Oh, that's your that's your paw, not the bottle. Once you get in, but these other two are still super full. Isn't that so big? Still pretty full as well. Big belly. They're not very warm, but I'm hesitant to put them in an incubator or putting them on a heating mat or something because I've just had one too many bad experiences with overheating and them dying that way. All right, look at the change we wrought on used to be super skinny one. Now she's not skinny anymore. And we decided to go ahead and feed these other two as well a little bit. Now they are extra, extra plump. Oh, I guess now would be a good time to tell you the names we decided on. So this first one, the Harlequin. If it's a girl, her name's gonna be Anadori. If it's a boy, it'll be Andor. This second one, is going to be Caladra, and if it's a boy, it's going to be Calendor. And then this one is going to be Taliana, and if it's a boy, Talinvor. Good morning. It's the next morning. We nursed the babies, and two of them did really great. The smaller one who was having trouble yesterday still was having trouble. We got some in here. Oh, we added some fur to keep them warm through the night and and so the third one ended up dying a few minutes ago we nursed her like maybe 10 minutes ago and then we came to check and she was dead so we have two ones left alive the harlequin one and then the more hardy black one and they both were drinking pretty well the harlequin one i managed to get drinking the entire time without any breathing in of milk and having it come up her nose but the black one, oh my gosh, she just kept drinking and, like, getting so excited and drinking so much. And then she'd, like, drink and drink and drink and then breathe and then, like, it'd go in her lungs and come shooting out her nose. And I was like, oh my gosh. 
but I tried my best, and I guess that's all you can do. These two are acting normal, but it's possible these two will die as well. But we'll keep trying to save them. But we have learned some things about bottle feeding, so which nipples I like better, and we're getting the system down with a warm goat milk, when to let them nurse a whole bunch, and, and stopping right before they need a breathing break. So we're, we're slowly learning some things, so that little baby's death wasn't completely wasted. We did learn some valuable lessons. Good morning. Anna, Dory, and Kaladra are still doing okay. They're still alive, still drinking. Because I'm nursing them on goat milk and the milk is spilling all over them, they, they kind of have dried milk on them, even though I try to wash them off with a wet rag. So their fur probably is not going to look normal. It already is coming in kind of strangely. But there's not much I can really do about that. This morning they both peed, so that's really good. That shows that they're getting enough nutrients. Pooping and peeing is good. Poor Anadori. I woke up last night at like 3 in the morning. I had to go to the bathroom, so I went to the bathroom. And then I had the thought that I should come check on the babies. I was like, no, I'm really tired. I don't really want to. But I kept feeling the strong impression that I should. And I came up, and Ani's little paw was wrapped around the fur. It's much better now, but it was like kind of cutting off her circulation. And you might be able to tell that this one's a little swelling still and it's discolored. I had to actually take scissors and snip the fur off. It kind of, it was like almost like a string. It was like all wrapped around. So we're done with the fur. But I'm so glad God prompted me to come up and check because if I'd have left it on her for another few hours while I was sleeping, I don't know how bad it would be. It's improving so much just in a few hours. So I'm hoping it'll go back to normal pretty soon. But that crisis was thankfully averted. I'm getting a little better at timing each little bit of nursing so that they don't get it up their nose. Not very much, though. We still had several bubbly noses this morning, but not as many as last night. So for now, they're doing okay. So it looks like Kaladra is either... Yeah, she's not dead yet, but looks like she ain't doing so good. She's breathing sporadically and acting weird. We're just gonna let her be, but she probably isn't gonna make it. On a dory, how's she doing? She's still acting pretty normal. Look at that good pee. Do you think she needs to be fed again tonight? Yeah, we'll definitely feed her yes. again. I guess, I don't know, maybe there's a slight chance that Kalantra's gonna make it through, but I'm pretty sure she's gonna go. It's a while later. Looks like we only have one baby left. Yeah. Oh, so sad. Oh, it's good, actually. Keep going. <gasps> Yay! You got it in a little bit. <laughs> what do you mean a little bit? Don't I got hold. it in her a lot. If you get it in, try her tipping it up more. Yeah. You're probably going to need a breathing break soon. Can't tell. Is that a good stopping point? Oh, and she's so wet with spilled milk. Her ears! Her ears are so wet. Your hand is all wet. <laughs> she fights me till I get it in, then she starts sucking. He's like, yay, yay. We just finished feeding her and washing her, and there were no nose bubbles this time. We were able to get all of the milk in her stomach and spill it on the outside of her body, but none of it went into her lungs or up her nose, so that's really good. We'll have to see how she does staying warm by herself, since she doesn't have any siblings to cuddle up with, but hopefully she'll be okay. We'll keep checking on her, make sure she's staying warm enough. It is Thursday night. Earlier today we were feeding the baby, and everything was going okay. I was out of the house this evening, and when I got back, the baby was a little bit cold, but I had to do some other things before I fed it, so I put her in the incubator to warm up, and I just finished my other things I had to do, and I came to feed her. And she was acting a little off, but not very bad, but she is now dead. She had a bit of yellow poop this morning, which I thought was a pretty good sign. Even though it's not a regular color, I thought poop was good. But she is completely dead now. I'm not sure what killed her. Maybe it was the milk and that it wasn't enough nutrients or the proper nutrients. Maybe she got too cold being a single baby and not having siblings to snuggle with or getting milk in her lungs one time too many and giving her lung infection or something. But I would think that 
the milk not being rabbit milk and instead of being goat milk might have been the problem. So while we did learn many things while trying to bottle feed these babies, the attempt overall failed. Hopefully you guys watching also were able to learn some things about bottle feeding in the proper way and the improper way, what to do and what not to do, and how hard it actually is to successfully bottle feed. And if that's the case, then I guess these baby bunnies' lives were entirely wasted because we were all able to learn some things from their lives and deaths. Hopefully, Isalie's next litter goes much better than this one did. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching!